Is it okay when fresh graduated reader first make mistakes? Just graduated and I'm scared. Good. I wonder the same thing. When I first started, I was super nervous. How do you manage back pain acquired from the job? All my colleagues, including myself, we always complain about back pain, shoulder pains, neck pain. How to get through rad tech physics if math? isn't your strongest subject. You don't have to go through your anatomy exams, imaging assignments, and clinical competencies alone. Subscribe to Axiratech for helpful tutorials and vlogs. Let's make the journey from the classroom to the extra room much easier. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Donna from Axiratech.com and today I'm going to be getting into some Q&A questions. Before I start off on the questions though, I just want to say Happy New Year. This is my first video of the year and actually my second video on this channel. I always found that, you know, in the field of radiography, we don't have a lot of representation on YouTube. We have, and even on in general on websites, we do have a lot of, um, like, well, at least on YouTube anyway, we have a lot of equipment focused um, videos. Maybe you might find one or two videos on anatomy or positioning, but radiography, doesn't have that sort of a representation and that's kind of why I started axiradtech.com in the first place because I wanted to be that voice for us radiographers that are new um, persons that are now starting into radiography just to you know like be that that person that I wanted on these different platforms when I was just starting out as well as when, when I was a student and when I just graduated which wasn't too too long ago but yes so I'm getting into these questions. I asked you all on Instagram and thank you so much to all my Instagram followers. We hit 500 very recently. So I'm thankful for all of you. I got a few questions. I said I'm making a Q&A video. Let me know, ask away, like tell me, what do you wanna know? I'm making videos, well, a Q&A video for students as well as new radiographers. And these are what you all ask. I think I should be able to get through all the questions. Uh, the only thing, I'm not gonna call anyone's name because I don't know if you all want your name out there, your Instagram handle out there. So I'll just read, right? The first thing I'll answer is basic knowledge of the field. So this is a more generalized question, right? Now radiography, as we know, has to do with medical imaging. There are many different modalities within radiography and usually when you start off radiography, you start with x-ray. There's not only x-ray doing normal dogs, <laughs> there's not only x-ray, but there's also MRI, CT, ultrasound, nuclear medicine, you can focus in on fluoroscopy and all those other things, right? However, when you're now starting a general x-ray radiography program, it's about using x-rays to form images when the x-rays pass through different tissues or different densities, you get various shades of grey. Some looking more white, while others might look dark or black, depending on the image. Why are my dogs whacking so much? The heck? So as radiographers, we are the persons that provide that diagnostic detail, that image, for the, the radiologists, for the doctors, so that they are able to, you know, diagnose other people. So that's just a, just a synopsis of what radiography is, what general radiography is. So it has to do with using x-rays, and of course, x-rays were discovered by Willem Röntgen. Um, so yeah, let's, let's move on. <laughs> How do you manage back pain acquired from the job? All my colleagues, including myself, we always complain about back pain, shoulder pains, neck pain, and ironically enough, just today, as in like a few hours ago, I actually had an appointment. So I, d I do recommend getting massages because I feel like how else are you going to deal with it, you know? But that aside, like let's try to avoid it in the first place. When you're going to take images, when you're moving the bucky, especially if you have a, a scenario where your your tube doesn't move on its own because in a lot of cases we have to physically move the tube, right? If your tube doesn't move on its own and you have to do that kind of labor, not all tubes glide easily. Sometimes you have to really tug and pull and bend and that will of course damage your back over time. So when you're pulling, just try to, you know, center your body, center your weight. Try not to pull from too high. Use the clips on the side so that we don't have to stretch up to the to the actual buttons when you're pulling it down. Let's just say I had a procedure where the 
the, the tube is really really high up another thing you could do before you put in your cassettes if you if you have a um, normal computer computer radiography what you would do is lift it raise the table first like try to avoid bending your back as much as possible so lift it um, like you know press the button to raise the table before you're putting a cassettes try not to bend over to um, position patients lift your table so that everything is kind of at like waist height or higher so that you're more comfortable and you put less of a strain on your back next question is it okay when fresh graduated radiographers make mistakes just graduated and I'm scared Good. I wonder the same thing. When I first started, I was super nervous. I think that your co-workers expect, especially if you have to wait a while before you get to start after graduating, they know that you're, you're fresh up. They, they know that you'll make mistakes. Of course, you don't want to make too many. You want to be conscious of what you're doing and try to stop and think and rationalize things before you carry out your action because you don't want to keep repeating x-rays too often but if you do repeat x-rays or you do make a mistake here or there or you're not perfect it's fine it's normal just you know try to read up on your theory and not only read your theory but consider ways that you can adapt because i learned that as a radiographer what you learn in the book isn't necessarily what you're gonna get in real life in your patient some patients, you know, body part thickness differences, they're unable to bend the ankle a certain way or bend the foot a certain way. So now you have to compensate with the angle of your extra beam. So, you know, it's, it's a lot, but as a beginner, fresh out, people know that you will make mistakes. It's just up to you to kind of calm your nerves, center yourself and just do it. Because at the end of the day, you graduate and you know what you're doing. So just do it. Okay, I actually got a couple questions on techniques, right? Manual techniques. Is there a clear cut way to learn them? Some sort of universal average and someone else asks how important is it to memorize techniques? Um, I think the more that you do the procedures, you will remember. It's all come second nature. You don't have to think, um, what I need to use for a knee again or what I need to use for the hip again. What I did soon as I started my clinical um portion of my program I had a book where I wrote down all the procedures I even because you know some tubes are different some um, machines some generators whatever some equipment pull kilovolts different ways and you would see in one institution um, a chest exposure a general chest exposure let's say like 96 and I don't know 2.5 MAS, 96 kbp, 2.5 MAS. That might work perfectly at this one place, but then they go at another place, and because of how their machines are calibrated, you get a poor exposure, you get a really underexposed image or overexposed, depending. So, you know, you just have to kind of work with it. I do recommend writing down if you're like fresh, fresh beginner. Keep a little notepad with you. I actually want to design one, like. To create an exposure chart a generalized one of course but get to know the exposures at your workplace and if you see that there's something that kind of works better make a note of it don't be afraid to make your own exposure charts or refer to the exposure charts that are already you know given a lot of times when you when they install these units they do put exposure charts um, they do give you exposure charts so you can ask for it because you don't want to be overexposing or underexposing and constantly having to repeat images due to poor exposure because not only you're running down the tube but you're also one if not it's not a good look right you're running down the tube as well as you're exposing the patient multiple times and at the end of the day this is radiation that you're using when it comes to general x-rays so yeah so dear student here interview advice so i did have a couple of interviews well three actually and I think what was important was confidence. Yes, you know that we fresh out, especially if you're just graduated. We know that we fresh out of a, of a program, right? We haven't had that real world experience yet. However, when you bring across that confidence and you are secure and sure in your abilities to take these images, the employer, the potential employer will see that. You can mention your attention to detail because detail is very important in x-ray not just for things like geometric sharpness and all that but it is important and not just the quality of the image but the quality of the 
the whole experience from the minute the patient walks in the room to the minute they walk out or wheeled out or whatever the case is. So your confidence, attention to detail, making sure that you have the core knowledge there so that if they ask you any questions that you're aware of it. Um, when it comes to more theoretical stuff like how x-rays are formed and stuff like that, you know. But yeah, a lot of times, especially now, you know, C19 is a real thing. You you want to know, the employers also want to know that you're, you're really understand, you're good with your infection control protocols. So I think now more than ever, we need to really put in a focus on that. But that's all I'll get into for this point. Maybe I'll do some more in-depth videos on some of these questions just to, you know, get it all there. But for now, that's what I have to say on that. How to get through rad tech physics if math isn't your strongest subject? Okay, so I thought math was my strongest subject when I was in secondary school. And then when I started college and I started to do college algebra and mathematical methods and statistics, I was like, it's a lot. I know it's a lot and math isn't everybody's strong point of course you know there is some math more so physics involved with radiation there comes a time where you would need to memorize certain formulas you can't get out of it you really have to sit down and literally learn it off get accustomed to it and not only that but what I found helpful for me was to kind of like pinpoint how different things act on other things so like the inverse square law think about things in a real life scenario don't just think Okay, if I do X, this will happen. No, think about the mechanics behind it. Okay, so the further I go away, the beam will diverge, it will get weaker. The further you are, not all the, the um, X-ray particles will reach to the patient or to me for scatter radiation. Like, think about how things work, the detail behind it, and not just the statement. Because if you just listen to the statement, you'll go through the program and you would just no statements and they wouldn't really understand what to do so then when you have a patient where you take an image and the image is completely black you don't know how to change your exposures to fix it or sometimes you don't even need to change your exposure you need to adjust your SID or whatever the case is so you know kind of think about it from a real world perspective and try to understand the core like how things affect other things and the physics and stuff will come naturally but learn your formulas at least for school, learning formulas. Let's see what else. So I got a question and this one was in Portuguese and the girl does not speak Portuguese but, you know, Google Translate. From what I understood, I think that this person who um, message was asking on, on what, like what are the routine procedures for a shoulder um, in terms of like incidents or accidents. Now when you do general shoulder x-rays, the patient just complaining of pain, you would do the typical internal external rotation, it looks at the rotator cuff, it looks at the, the ligaments, the, just a general idea of course, it's, it's no MRI, but it will give you a general idea of like any articulation issues, joint issues or um, degeneration and stuff like that within the shoulder joint right and that region there but that's just generalized shoulder x-rays of course you know you have scap wise when you will do an AP neutral of the patient damage or potentially dislocated the shoulder you will do a neutral view and then you will do the scap wide view of course you could do it PA or AP of course the patient will be angled but that view in particular would show dislocations and any other issues surrounding that as well as fractures of the scapula if it's the scapula that you're really focusing on right so we leave that at that too for now or someone asks how to make a scapula wide view i actually have a blog on this and i will link it down in the description bar below but what i do want to say though generally whether you're doing ap or pa positioning for a scap wide you want to feel like really palpate even if it means you have to take a few seconds, you can palpate for the scapula and like put the palm of your hand against the, the face of the scapula to kind of to angle the patient so you would know whether or not the scapula is in profile. What you could do though is check out the blog. Some people prefer AP, some prefer PA. I feel like PA is a bit more difficult if you don't know the technicalities behind it, but of course, you're centering everything is textbook but yeah 
that's what I realized. I did and I tip for that, but do check out the blog and I will make a video on this later on, like actually trying to demonstrate it for you guys. So this doctor asks if mesenteric colon infection, then what could indicate in radiology? So I'm definitely no radiologist. But generally infections of the bowel will tend to look um, like more lytic. It almost looks as if they are holes due to the lytic lesions. You will see a kind of like erosion. In some cases you would even see um, the bowel thickening, the lining of the bowel. So I guess different different um, pathologies will have different obvious indicators. But generally you will see that. And of course if you want to look at that too, Fluoroscopy is a really good uh, modality for that and well even further would be CT So yeah, what did you find hardest about the degree for me? It was a particular course when I came to clinical practicum. I think that was okay I mean once you work along when you understand your theory to go into the practice it, it becomes a little easier Right, especially when you have family or friends to position them for the hand thing palpate for the crest <laughs> all kind of thing, right? But when it came to what I found hardest, it was definitely a certain course, radiation. Physics, um, that was really hard. It, there were quite a few formulas to learn off, so I totally understood the question that the person earlier had asked about math not being a strong suit and how to work out with physics. That was that was a lot really the way um really radiobiology, how the radiation affects different tissues in a more detailed form. It, that was really a lot. I did pass, thank God, but it definitely was not an easy class. It was super stressful, but I did it. I know I'm a radio person. Yeah. It's in the past now. <laughs> but yeah, that was hard. Um math was really hard, but in particular one of the math courses was a Algebra. I think it was college algebra. I actually had to do over that a couple times. No shame in my game. My transcript reflects it. <laughs> it was really stressful, but again, it's it's about finding a study method that works best for you. When I teamed up with another classmate and we kind of worked it out, in the end it became much easier. So, you know. So the last question. I keep clipping the iliac crest when I shoot a pelvis. My CR is centered at the ASIS, light field open. So when she's at the light field open, she means that she's not collimating so that that could be the cause of the crest clipping off, right? Depending on the person, like patient size, like if they're a little more gracious, as my lecturer used to say and still says, if you're gracious or you know a bigger patient, you would think you're feeling the ASIS, but you're actually feeling much lower than you think you are. You could also feel from that point that you consider to be or what you think is or what is the ASIS and move the arm around to, to go to the top of the crest. What I do, I then open the drawer to see the cassette, the image receptor and I move the cassette up after I palpate and I know where the top of the crest is. So let's say this is the top of the crest, right? This is one side of the crest here, right? I move the cassette about an inch and a half above that. So then when I take the image, I know for a fact that my iliac crest is always on the image and the entire pelvis is on the image. Doing that feeling for the, the groove of the iliac crest and then making sure the cassette is a little way above that, that would help fine tune your centering and you'll be sure to get it. So that's just a little tip there. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate you guys for asking these questions and for coming onto the channel. Do subscribe if you haven't already. I really want to make more radiography videos. I want to do um, tutorials, not just tutorials, but like um, show different positioning, tips and tricks. Um, where I work, they they pride themselves on confidentiality in terms of recording and stuff. So I don't think that I would take the chance, or if I do, it will be very short clips of actually recording um, at the hospital. However, I want to set up a little something so that I can show you all myself. And I appreciate you all, and let's have a great 2021. To subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and turn on your post notifications so you'll know every time I upload. Just know that I do plan to upload frequently. Um, so yeah, let's join. Let's you know, make our little Axe Rattec family grow even more. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.